Hi guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna do another fish talk and we're gonna talk about the zebra danio. It's a really interesting fish, so stick around to learn everything about them. All right, so yes, yeah, zebra danios. Um, so they basically, this fish, um, yeah, they, they about, what, like that, like that small, something, well, about, about that size. Um, anyway, they um, are, well, they've got these stripes, um, you know, like horizontal stripes, that's what they call the uh, zebra danios because they look like zebras, I guess. Um, yeah. Anyway, you got all different types of danios, so you know, there's all different types and whatever, and, but we're gonna be talking about zebra danios, but basically all this information applies to pretty much any type of danio. So where do we start? I think we should start with maybe the tank size. You know, these guys um, don't get too big. You know, they get, I would say around, what, like, what's that, three, four centimeters? maybe five sometimes it really depends um so you know you don't need a too big tank i would say anywhere from around 60 liters is fine which is what's that in gallons i don't know uh, about 20 gallon tank something like that 60 to 80 you know 20 gallons whatever that should be totally fine as you know they're pretty small however they do like to swim a lot so you'd need some space uh, to swim also if you're looking at a tank um preferably have a like a longer tank instead of a taller tank because they do like to swim from side to side and not from bottom to top, you know. Um, so keep that in mind when you get in a tank. However, other than that, you know, you just, yeah, just make sure something around that range. As for water parameters, I never really worry too much, but if you're interested, here they are. They do prefer a bit more harder water, so between seven and eight, but that's the pH, by the way, I'm talking about, but it really doesn't matter too much. And then, because, you know, they will be like used to the water that you have, that your shop has, where you got them from probably, or maybe from a breeder. Um, but yeah, so it's really not that big a deal. So temperature is pretty an interesting like thing, because some people say you can keep them in cooler temperatures, some people say you can't. Um, now for myself, I've had them in like room temperature tanks, so they've done totally fine there. They've even bred in there, we'll, we'll go on to the breeding in a little bit. But yeah, you know, you know, anything will pretty much do um i wouldn't go too warm so i would say the limit is around 25 26 if you go any hotter than that they'll live like short and everything like that you know the standard usual things but yeah i think around you know around between the 20 and 25 should be fine but yeah you can keep them in ponds if you wanted to it depends you know they can't go like into the like really low temperatures you know but yeah, they should be fine. By the way, what do you guys think of this camera? Second time I'm asking, but nobody responded the last time. Oh, actually, that's a lie. They did respond, but uh, yeah, we're in a different setting now. We're in the room, like in the room, and it's like a bit different. Like if I get closer, it'll focus more on me. <laughs> if I go back more, it'll be less. Anyway, it's pretty cool um, if you're interested in cameras and stuff. <laughs> Anyway, let's go for, um, well, we had tank size, we've had blah, blah, blah. All right, uh, time for, I guess, the, um, what am I trying to say? I don't know, uh, this, how many fish you should keep together um, because that's an important aspect always, you know, are they shoaling fish? Are they fish who wanna be alone? Well, I can tell you they are shoaling fish. They like to be in a little group, at least minimum six. I would do the same, well, preferably like 10 at least. Um, but yeah, and they can go up into the hundreds if you wanted to, but they do like to be in a little group and they go, yeah, back and forth and stuff. They are really fast though, so keep that in mind. They are really, really fast, so if you've put them in a tank, then um, yeah, you're not gonna be able to catch them out again because they are just so quick and it's like really difficult to catch them out of like a, a nice aquascape tank. So yeah, we've had pretty much everything like care requirements. Oh, maybe tank mates is a good thing. Uh, tank mates, they're pretty peaceful fish. They can go with pretty much anything you put with them. Just don't make, you know, don't put too big fish with them because they might eat them because they are quite small. But otherwise, yeah, it, they should be pretty fine with most tropical fish. Right, let's get on to some breeding then because the breeding process is actually pretty interesting with these fish. I've actually made a whole video and even a playlist series on how to breed these guys and I'll link that, what is it, up there I think, up there or up there, one of the corners, I'll link it there so you can watch that after this video. Don't click off yet because then it like, YouTube is weird with like, they want you to stay on a video and I don't know. Uh, just yeah, finish watching this video and then watch those. But I'll just uh, bring it down into a nutshell. So basically what you want to do, uh, well it's not, a, well it's, it's easy some, in some ways and in some ways it's not. 
So you want a pair, right? Um, to tell which are male and female, uh, the males will be a lot thinner. From above, you'll see they're a lot thinner. Um, the females will be a lot more fatter and round and plump and whatever. And you want to make sure you feed them well, like condition them. Well, that's one thing I haven't gone over is actually food for these guys. They'll eat pretty much all like flake foods and pellets and whatever, even frozen foods they like and some live foods. So pretty much the same as any tropical fish. But yeah, back to the breeding. So you want to condition them well. So, you know, you know what are males and females. Then I what I've done is I take a male and a female, put them in like a kind of like a pond plant basket and then put that in like a container and hang it in there, put a bit of moss in there, put the pear in, and then they'll overnight, they'll lay the eggs, the eggs will fall through the basket and they like in the container, then take the pear out, blah, blah, blah. And then <laughs> the eggs will hatch like any other fish, you know, in a couple of days. But, um, and then you can feed them and raise them up to a nice little fry. But like I said, I've made that whole video series. It's really interesting. Even if you don't want to breed them, it's pretty cool to see how they grow and how it works. Um, so I highly suggest watching that. And then, you know, once you've gotten them to like a, a fish size, like a little size like that, it's easy growing them up. Um, it's really not difficult. Just some good food, some brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp, um, and yeah, flake foods and stuff like that. So honestly, that's pretty much everything you need to know about zebra danios. And this, like I said, also applies to most other danios, like leopard danios and whatever. You've got all different types, you know. Um, yeah. It, basically applies to them too. Seen there in the, like the same family, but just different like types. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's biology. <laughs> so anyway, guys, um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.